Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm using not one but two Obspot Tiny 2 webcams going directly into my Mac Mini, and I'm using OBS, and of course this can be a live streaming setup, or this can also be for just recording. And I'm just gonna show you my setup. I have a full review video up here of the Obspot Tiny 2 camera, and I'm not gonna go into all those details again, but you can check that video out. They were nice enough to send me a second camera. So I can come over here and I can switch to my second camera angle. So I got two camera angles and I've got a third angle, which is my desktop with camera two also going to it. So there I am in the little circle there, and that's the same angle as this angle. I'm pretty new with OBS. I haven't used it a ton, but I'm getting the hang of it. I can have the audio from my microphone coming in, and I can have the audio from my desktop. So here's a little song I was writing today, and I just did this in like two minutes, literally. Just made up some words, you know, but I'll just show you. Do you wanna be with me tonight? Can you find a, find a safe place for us to hide? So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I'm not saying the song is, I'm just saying that, you know, you can do the desktop thing. You can be streaming this, you could be playing a game, you know, it's a cool setup. And OBS is deep and such a diverse application. So what's amazing is you can have four of these cameras connected to your Mac mini. You can use the two front USB-C ports and you can use two on the back and you can still connect a hub, right? So you can have a lot going on. You could also send a switcher into this or you can send the cameras into a switcher. But I'm using OBS, the app, to do the switching. So there's camera one, there's camera two, and there's the desktop. So it's pretty neat. So let's take a look at my setup here. So you can see I've got three scenes. Tiny one. And this scene is got my Mac OS audio and my camera. So Mac OS and camera. And my mic is already set up to go to the mic aux input. And then when we come over to angle two, same setup on the audio. And you want a scene for each camera. That's something I had to learn. I thought you'd do one scene and do a bunch of cameras, but then you can't do the live switching. You can't use it as a switcher. You have to have whatever you want in each scene be an angle, right? So I've got scene one is tiny two, scene two is this guy not cropped and then i had to create this scene with the mac mini with the mac mini audio with my microphone and with the cropped tiny so i made another i brought in a, the camera again and i did the cropping so if you go into your filters i downloaded this advanced masks rather so it's a mask mass out everything except my little circle here and you can change the shape of these i meant to change this rectangle eclipse regular polygon star square square is kind of cool looks like an airplane window but we'll go back with circle so that's how you do that you have to download these from github and the other mask i got or the other one i got was the um background remove Back. Oh, there it is. Now it's working. It's kind of cutting off my arm, but you get the picture. It's because the microphone's there. But anyway, I'm not using that. I'm using this. Um, then you can move these things around. I can move myself around on the desktop. I can be over here or I can be over here. So I'm going to leave it at that. 
you know, these tiny two cameras, they look really good. I think for the money, they're a good deal. They're so diverse. And you know, the problem with filming yourself with tripods and stationary cameras, not pan tilts where the camera will move around, they will track you and everything. Watch the video on that. But they're just really great for not having to get out of your chair and readjust the camera, sit back down, make sure you're in the right spot. They can track you and then you can say, unlock me and they'll stop tracking you. And you can use hand gestures to do that, or you can verbally say it, or you can just manually do the joystick with their software, which is pretty cool. Now, what's interesting is their software also does recording, but they don't allow you to come in here and switch camera angles. What they do is allow you to come in here and tweak your camera colors and all your settings are in here under image. Or you have the console where you got the joystick where you can pan around your camera. Like I can adjust myself now to get myself more centered. There we go. That's nice. See, I'm in fine gimbal. Now I'm in coarse gimbal, so it'll move around a lot quicker. Whoa, 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 whoa. There. Uh, I also have my picture reversed. Um, so when I'm looking up here on my computer, it looks like I'm looking up there. If, it's, if I don't flip the photo, uh, if I don't mirror the image, um, then it looks funny. So we've got the image flipped. I think we come in here to transform, flip horizontal there. What are you doing, dudes? Hmm. Get that blinky out of your face, you little munchkin. <laughs> okay, so I decided to connect my iPhone to this setup now. So I got three cameras at my desktop. So we got Tiny2 number one, Tiny2 number two, the desktop with Tiny2 number two, and my iPhone. There's the iPhone. It looks different, I know, but uh, a little tweaking. I think we can get them all closer. And the iPhone just comes in like a webcam. It does not have any settings on it. You can't see the picture on the phone. It just goes into webcam mode. You can just bring it into OBS via USB-C cable, just like you can with the Tiny 2s. So now I've got three USB cables connected to my Mac Pro Mini and it's handling all three cameras no problem. Uh, we'll see what happens when I add a fourth camera. You might start running out of bandwidth, I don't know. I gotta check the memory usage and things of that nature, but things are looking pretty smooth. So I found out that they make these USB-C cables that are fiber optic. I didn't even know these things existed, but I was looking into it and I'm like, oh, cool. I'll leave a link in the video description, but they run up to 164 feet, which, you know, if you wanted to set up four cameras in a small club and do live streaming, this might be a great way to go. And while they're not cheap, they're cheaper than buying two adapters to extend a camera over something like SDI. So you don't have to use like adapters and repeaters and stuff like that. You can literally, possibly, I'm not sure yet, but run these cameras over 150 feet with a USB-C fiber optic cable. And those are expensive, but you could have this as like a four camera setup in a small music venue, all going to your MacBook Pro or whatever, bring in all the cameras, and that would be a really nice little compact setup. And it's a question of how these cameras can handle loud music vibrations. They might just get all wobbly. I have to try this out, but I'm definitely gonna pick up one of those cables and give it a test. So that'll be food for another video. But yeah, USB-C fiber optic cables. Didn't know that existed until like yesterday. I'll leave a link in the description for those. Um, they're on Amazon. But the other thing you want to do is save your OBS settings, right? So you got to come up here to scene and go to export. And that's going to export all your camera angles that you have set up, all the work you've done. You want to save that. So you go up to export and then you import it. So you save it somewhere, give it a name, you import it, then it'll show up on the list and you can have multiple scenes here. So as soon as you switch, it's gonna switch to whatever the other scene settings were. And you have profiles, you can save your profile and that's gonna save like your streaming setup, your bit rates, you know, all of the more technical stuff, not the scenes, but more of the behind the scenes stuff. 
So the other way you can do it though, and I'm just gonna show you this real quick, is you can go to your user account and your user library, application support, OBS, and there it is, OBS Studio, and just back up this whole folder onto your desktop. And then you can bring that in and use that as your method of backing up everything and bringing it back in and launching OBS and all your settings from that backup should be there, including all your different scenes, right? Your multiple scenes. So it backs up everything, all your plugins, everything in the OBS world will be backed up that way. So that's a cool thing to know uh, because there isn't just like a simple save with OBS. It's save your scenes, save your profile, or rather export them, import them. And then you can also do what I did, just showed you, which is to save the entire OBS application support folder. And that's got everything in it. All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video. <laughs> Mike.